Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about concepts and equations for average speed and average velocity. This is a really central and important foundational set of ideas in introduction to motion for our physics classes. So where have we been? We've talked about position, distance traveled, and displacement. I've got a previous lesson I did on that. I'll put a link in the upper right where you can get that if you have not already. Today we're going to be talking about average speed and average velocity. And building on that, we're going to talk about the slope of a displacement versus time graph. So think about velocity in a different way. So let's talk about average speed and average velocity and think about what this is. Average speed, so first of all, it's a scalar quantity. It's independent of direction, so that's what scalar means. What if I asked you, what is the direction of the temperature today? Or what if I said, what is the direction of the mass of that object. Those would be meaningless questions because there's no direction associated with scalar quantities. And that's true for average speed. We don't worry about what direction something has traveled. We just take its distance that has been traveling in an absolute value sense. We make it positive whatever direction it's going and we divide it by the time that it's been traveling. And that's going to be our average speed. I'll show you how that works. And our average velocity is going to use a different concept over here. It's going to use displacement up here. Displacement is a difference in position from the final location to the initial location. I'm going to show you examples in the equation for this as well, but it's a delta x over your delta t, or just over time down here basically. And really important as a point of comparison, you could say this is a vector quantity. That means the direction is required. You actually have to talk about direction if you're going to be dealing with a vector. All right, so let's get started with this. We could say the average speed, like we talked about, is distance traveled divided by time. So that's going to be delta x over delta t, or sometimes just delta x over t. And if we write just t, it's understood we're talking about our t initial is equal to zero. So sometimes people don't write delta t, they just write t. And that's understood that our t initial is equal to zero in that case. But this delta x up here simplifies to x final minus x initial, but that is distance traveled. So you're going to make that an absolute value, so to speak. You're going to make that in a positive sense. And I'll show you examples of that. Let's take a look at the average velocity version. So average velocity, notice as a concept up here, it's different. It's displacement. But as a mathematical symbol, it's still going to be a delta x. This is the delta x here, and this delta x up here can be a little misleading because they are different, actually. This is distance traveled. Whereas if we're talking about velocity, this is going to be our displacement. And that is our final position minus our initial position. All right. It's still going to be divided by delta t. Or a lot of times people just write t because this time initial is assumed to be zero. And importantly over here, there's also sometimes if the writer remembers to write this in, there is a little vector notation. So that's a little arrow over here. Sometimes it can be written as a half arrow. Usually it's written as a half arrow. But that's to give the reader a heads up that we're talking about uh, direction. So it's not enough to say something's traveling at 30 miles an hour. It's 30 miles an hour in what direction we're talking about. All right, so let's build on some of the work we've done previously in terms of understanding what the difference is between distance traveled and displacement. Okay, so I given a football analogy, a football problem that I made up earlier in my previous screencast on distance traveled versus displacement. And just as a quick recap, you have a football play where the ball travels forward 20 yards, backwards to the line of scrimmage, and all the way back to the 10 yard line over here. If we do the math and figure out what is the total distance traveled, well, we've got 20 yards this way, 20 yards back this way, but we don't make that a negative. We make that a positive. In all senses, distance traveled, direction doesn't matter. So we're going to treat the forward direction and the backwards direction as like positive, you could say. So that would be 20 yards, 20 yards, plus another 15 yards. This is not to scale, by the way. For a total of 55 yards, but the displacement is going to be different. Displacement is just the final location minus the initial location. And we're just worrying about the y-axis here. And we're not worrying about this x-axis motion here. So our final location is the 10-yard line. Our initial location is the 25-yard line. Is that possible to get a negative 15 yards on a football play? And the answer is, yeah, you can have a loss on the down. You can have a turnover and so on. And that is the same for displacement. It's possible to have a negative displacement. Is it possible to have a negative distance traveled? The answer is no. I could ask this another way. I could say, is it possible for you to wake up in the morning 
and count a negative number of steps you have traveled, like to have negative steps that you've traveled? The answer is no. I mean, I guess if you took your number of steps and just made them negative, I guess that's possible. But basically, you cannot take negative steps, so to speak, right? You either take a step or you don't. So this distance traveled is a scalar quantity. This displacement is a vector quantity. All right, so let's continue. Based on that previous work, we're going to say the distance traveled was 55 yards. The displacement was minus 15 yards. The play happened over 20 seconds. So this is new. We're going to say, all right, let's Let's say this whole thing happens over 20 seconds, and this is how average speed and average velocity builds on distance traveled and displacement. We're adding in a time component here. And so the questions are, what is the average speed and what is the average velocity? All right, and so we're going to take this equation. This is also, you could say, a delta x over time right here. And you plug in your delta x for distance traveled. So that's going to be 55 yards divided by 20, 2.8 yards a second. That's for the average speed version of this. If you do the average velocity version of this, this is not the same. Displacement is not the same as distance traveled. We just take the final location minus the initial location. And so that ends up being a negative 15 yards divided by 20 seconds. This is our average velocity over here. Notice that these two answers are not the same. So even though average speed and average velocity have basically the same basic equation, this is the scalar version and this is the vector version over here. All right, and so let me help you out with a multi-step average speed problem. So if we take a look at this one, it says Zach M is a great student who starts from home, heads east 40 miles in his car, and gets to his grandpa's place in an hour exactly. He spends two hours there having lunch with his grandpa. He then gets back in his car, travels more slowly on his way back because of the traffic, getting back home in 1.2 hours. What is the overall average speed for the entire trip, including the time for lunch? So this is a little bit tougher problem that you might see in an average speed category. So at the beginning of a physics class, for instance, so if we say average speed is equal to distance travel divided by time, what we're going to do is say he travels 40 miles plus another 40 miles. Don't worry about direction. Don't make anything negative here. And if we're going to include the time for lunch, we literally just add up the hours that he is spending, even for lunch. And that sometimes gets confusing for students. So you've got 4.2 hours in the denominator. That simplifies to 19 miles per hour. Well, if the problem wants to exclude the time for lunch, well, how would you change that? You would change that by simply getting rid of the two hours here. You would do the same calculation without the two hours but get a very different result, right? If you're just looking at his traveling, his traveling, he's gonna end up with 36 miles an hour overall. Okay, but what if the problem actually gives you not the displacement, but gives you the rate at which he's traveling? This is the hardest type of average speed problem you'll see. So I've kept the base problem the same, but changed some of the details. Anything that is underlined and bolded is going to be a change, right? So notice the problem doesn't give you the displacement that he travels for his first part of the trip. It actually gives you a rate at which he travels for the first part of the trip and for the last part of the trip. So I want you to think about how you would approach this problem. Take a moment to kind of sketch out something on a piece of paper that will help you to figure out how are you going to approach this problem. All right, and so what we're going to do, since we're interested in the distance traveled, we need that to be able to get our answer. So we need to get our distance traveled. What we're going to do is isolate for that. To isolate for that, I just take my V average, multiply it by time. So I say distance traveled is equal to V average times time. And I'm going to say you've got 60 miles an hour times one hour. He has traveled 60 miles in that direction to go visit his pet armadillo. And on the way back, he travels 50 miles an hour for 1.2 hours. That is 60 miles in the opposite direction of what he traveled previously, which makes sense. And the question is, what are the overall speeds for the entire trip, either including the time for lunch or not? So let's do both just to understand the concept here. Now we have solved for the distance traveled there and back. We can now do the problem in a similar way to what we've done before. So what we're going to say is, 60 miles plus 60 miles so that is going to be our delta x here and our time if we're taking into account time for lunch you've got 1 plus 2 plus 1.2 so that answer is going to be 29 miles an hour 
if we again were to do the problem without consideration for the time for lunch you would end up with 55 miles per hour so that concludes this lesson on average speed we're going to be talking about how you can graph the displacement divided by time and figure out what velocity is with that kind of setup so it's an important lesson that's coming up i'll put a link to that coming up hopefully this lesson has been helpful thank you for listening if you have a comment please add a comment and i hope you have a great day